Hi, I'm Julie Antwistle, and you're watching OTV, where we're going to provide you with solutions for living. In this episode, we're going to talk about another common reason that parents seek OT treatment for their child, because their child demonstrates problems with fine motor skills beyond just printing difficulties. Children with fine motor skill deficits have difficulties printing, managing zippers, laces, or buttons, picking up small objects, are messy when eating or coloring, and struggle to use scissors or to manipulate parts of small toys. Helping a child to improve a fine motor problem usually starts with an assessment to look at their current skills and developmental level. OTs have standardized tests we use, or we will ask the child to engage in various activities to give us a sense of their abilities. Once we have completed our assessment, we will customize a therapy program to meet their needs. Often our sessions will involve challenging their skills through different activities that they can also do at home with guardians or siblings. These might include using Lego, making things with Play-Doh or clay, sorting small items like marbles, money or macaroni, doing beadwork to make jewelry, chalking outside, or making fun shapes with pipe cleaners. But as OTs, it's also important that we look at additional factors that can impact fine motor abilities, such as general upper extremity strength and coordination. Kids with reduced strength in their arms and hands will have a harder time managing intricate finger movements. After we assess upper extremity strength and its relationship to any fine motor problems, we might address any identified weaknesses through recommending that kids use an exercise ball in a prone position to do a puzzle, wheelbarrow walking, or using monkey bars as examples. The development of a proper pincer grasp is also crucial for overall fine motor development. This grasp is so important for skills like managing buttons, zippers, snaps, tying shoes, and holding a pencil. To help strengthen a developing pincer grasp, we might suggest that kids use clothespins to pick up marbles and place them in the mouth of a tennis ball, pick up coins from a tabletop and place them into a piggy bank, or use other toys like Light Bright. Lastly, as OTs, we also like to educate kids and parents on the importance of the stabilizer or helper hand versus the dominant or manipulating hand. Parents should keep in mind that a dominant hand preference usually starts to develop between two and four years and becomes very clear by age six. It is important to encourage the development of the dominant hand by placing objects at midline, allowing the child to choose which hand to use in order to reach or grasp. Then, they can be encouraged to stabilize objects with the helping hand, which makes the dominant hand more effective in managing the fine motor task. In the end, remember that each child and each environment will need a unique solution to any given problem. Seek the services of an occupational therapist if your child needs some extra help. Well, that concludes this episode of OTV. Remember, OTs know stuff.